Okay, my name's Taryn and I'm here with Brett and we are going to walk you through this stream characterization and water quality assessment worksheet. And um, we're here at the Columbia Slough is the stream name and we are in Fairview. So it's currently February 18th, 2022 and the time is 1029. And our GPS coordinates are 45.54975, negative 122.45718. And as I said, I'm Taryn and I'm here with Brett. So the current weather conditions, it's pretty overcast and cloudy. I'd say about 100% cloud cover. In the past 24 hours, it's just been cloudy. Um, and there hasn't been a really heavy rain in the past seven days. There has been some rain, but not a super heavy storm. And let's get this, I'm gonna use this nifty Kestrel to um, get our air temperature, our relative humidity, and the wind speed. And so the air temperature is currently 10.7 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna write this down on my data sheet so we all have the same thing. Okay, the relative humidity is, <laughs> hang on, that's the temperature still. <laughs> okay, here we are, we're gonna skip to wind speed next. It is currently zero miles per hour. Unless it changed. Oh, uh, one, 1.4, 1. 1. 1.6. Okay, 1. 1.4, one, we'll do 1. 1.6. 1. 1.6 miles per hour, it's very calm slight mini gusts. Uh, let's see. And relative humidity. Okay, here we go. This makes more sense. Relative humidity is about 80.5. Yep. Okay, great. So 80.5. Thereabouts. 80, 81, somewhere in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we'll move to the next section of watershed features. Um, we are here, we're basically in a residential neighborhood. Uh, there are some homes um, that way. You can see there's some commercial areas um, over there. And the whole Columbia Slough watershed, um, you know, there's a lot of roads, residential areas, there's golf course, um, commercial areas. You, we just missed a plane flying overhead, so we're also on a flight path of the airport. Um, so lots of potential for um, some local watershed non-point source pollution. And um, you can see here that um, <laughs> there's a lot of trucks too. Um, there is the potential for some erosion right here. It looks like they're currently doing some restoration and revegetation work in this area. Uh, but you can see a lot of this ground currently is not covered with vegetation. And so um, there's a lot of potential for, or at least a moderate potential for erosion to be happening in this area. Um, so for riparian vegetation, we mostly are seeing grasses here. I don't know what species um, these are, so we can just leave it at grass. But we also have some blackberry um, and a few other species, but it's dominated by grasses with some blackberry. Uh, the canopy cover in this location is essentially zero. Um, the the slough is uncovered by canopy vegetation. Um, and so the overstory vegetation density would just be zero for all the directions. Um, and then the substrate and large woody debris section, there is not any large woody debris visible in the stream. Um, there are zero pieces of large woody debris in the stream within five meters of each direction. And now we're going to, I collected a sample of the sediment wall. Um, this is what the sediments look like. And um, if we feel this, you can tell it's mostly silt in here. It's really smooth and kind of flower-like. A little bit of grit, but essentially silt is what we will call the sediments. All right.
right, now we're moving to the next page. We're going to talk about stream character. And as you can see, um, this stream here is pretty much a straight shot. Um, there are no rapids, pools, or riffles right here, so we're just seeing um, a straight run. The estimated width is about 8 meters across, with a depth of about 1 meter, which is an, a definite estimate because <laughs> we can't get in there. Um, the stream is channelized at this, at this location, and if we look behind us, we can see there's actually um, an overpass, but then also behind on the other side of that bridge, there is a water control structure that essentially is a dam um, where they can uh, lower and raise um, some, <laughs> some uh, blocks that can control the water flow. Um, so currently the water is up right now, but um, that can control the water flow. And there are no culverts present at this site. Okay, so now we are going to try and see if we can get a measurement for the flow rate. And to do that, I'm going to take this LabQuest, um, which is the, the probe setup that we have here at PCC. And so um, this sensor, we can plug a probe into this and then it'll take a reading of the flow rate. And so you can see here, let me put this in my pocket. Um, what will happen is we're going to stick this into this stream about mid-channel, about mid-depth, as best as we can get. Um, we are using this lovely extender that Brett has invented <laughs> to try and get us closer out into the stream. But if there's a good flow, it'll make this uh, little turbine spin, and then that will give us a reading of what the flow rate is. So, I'm going to head over here. And it won't be exactly midstream, but or maybe not at all. <laughs> now, see if I can get a reading on this. per second. So it's uh, variable a little bit. That could be because I'm having trouble holding it steady as well. Um, but the water's not moving very quickly at all. It's pretty, pretty slow. So there were some coyotes over there. I don't know if they came up on camera. All right, now we're going to head to the water quality section of the, um, of the worksheet. And during that pause, we just saw a couple of coyotes run in the background, so there is some are some mammals using this site as well. So now I'm gonna um, fill this bottle from as close to midstream as I can get. It won't be quite midstream, but try that again because it's super funny. Oh. I went a little bit too far down. <laughs> right. And we're going to use this for our next couple measurements. All right, the first measurement we're going to do is turbidity. So I took some of our sample water and I poured it into this vial. And turbidity is going to be measuring like essentially the murkiness or the cloudiness of the water. So I want to make sure I wipe the vial off before I put it in. And then this is what the turbidity sensor looks like. We open this top, align the arrows. right around 
around 50 um, NTUs. Okay, continuing on with water quality, next we're going to measure nitrates. And so we're gonna do a little test strip for this. And if you were doing this in real life, you would wanna make sure that you um, don't get them all wet. So you want dry hands as you reach in here. And the directions say that we are going to dip this in our water sample for two seconds and then set a minute timer and then we'll try and match some colors for the, the nitrate. So I'm dipping it in. All right, now we're setting the timer for a minute. <laughs> All right, it's been a minute. So now we're going to, um, we're just looking at the top strip for this because this measures nit nitrates and nitrites and our um, water quality sheet just looks at nitrates. So we're just gonna look at the top one. And um, these strips are maybe, it's not the perfect coloring, so we're going to look more at um, the shading, really. And so I'm going to say it's in between two and five, um, probably closer to two. But we're looking at this in parts per million or milligrams per liter. So we'll say we'll say around two um, parts per million. All right, we're back. And now we're going to measure phosphate using this Lamotte test strip kit. Um, and this works a little bit differently than the nitrates. So this time we will fill uh, this test tube with 10 milliliters of sample water. And the weather is starting to change. You can tell it's getting a little bit sunny now. And then again with dry hands, I'm going to grab a test strip out. And I'm going to put it in the cap like this. And then put it into our test tube. And then we're going to invert it five times. One, two, Then we will remove the cap. And then we're going to try and match up um, the color of our sample water with this. <laughs> Let me look through the lens. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, it looks pretty low. I would. I would call it zero, okay. which is kind of surprising, but okay. yeah, that's, uh, I think, as near as we can tell. Perfect. All right, our next water quality measurement is conductivity. So we're back using uh, one of the vernier probes again. So I have this nifty vernier set up in my pocket. And then we have a conductivity probe uh, attached to and study it, it was at 79 milligrams per liter it changes as soon as i take it off out of the water but 79. all right we're going to me measure ph now so we have again ph probe with the vernier All right, next we're going to measure the dissolved oxygen. And we'll tie down.
93.2%. All right, our last measurement is temperature. Head down. Point four degrees Celsius.